today I like to share my experience of EG4 3000 watt inverter and grow watt 3000 watt inverter. To set up power saving mode for both units is very straightforward. Uh, both is under program number four. You press enter for three seconds, go to program number four, change to enable, and press enter again. And then now you're in power saving mode. Once you switch to power saving mode, you should see the output drop from 120 volt to zero volt if there is no load on the circuit. To disable power saving mode, basically you just go back to program 4, then disable it. And this time you should see the output change from 0 to 120. The way power saving mode works is that they will send a pulse to the circuit and see if there's any load on the circuit. And if it finds a load on the circuit, and it will see how many watts. If it's too low, it will turn itself off again. Then it will search again after a delay. In this test here, you can see inverter send a signal to the line and turn the lights on. And after 5 seconds, it realized that the load is too low. Or turn itself off to the power saving mode again. Then the, after one second delay, it send another signal out again. You can see with EG4, if the load is too low, it's just gonna turn on and off during the power saving mode. With Grow on, the setting is identical to EG4. They're both under program number four. After you turn on the power saving mode, the voltage will drop to zero when there's no load on the circuit. The idle consumption for the grow was slightly higher than EG4 during the power saving mode. Now see how often the grow wall check the uh, load on the circuit. And we can see clearly that um, EG4 um, send a pulse to the circuit every second. Uh, so I created this two chart to help you understand. Um, so EG4 does every second and grow on look like every 30 seconds. So um, just look at this. Um, so over here, this is the time 0 to 90 seconds. And here is the pulse uh, 0 to 120 volt. For each of a pulse every second until they find a little load. Then once they found a load, it will stay for five seconds. And if this load is not um, meet the criteria, I don't really know the internal setting for uh, both uh, inverter. My guess probably they set it at 100 watt. So when that happened, if it's under um, 100 watt, they would turn the cell phone off again. And it will send a pulse again after one second. So since we apply a little low uh, in our experiment, I have the little uh, work light, 
Um, I guess it's about 30 watts or 20 watts, something pretty low. That's just to show you guys the on and off. So in in, in our experiment, they uh, turn itself, the inverter turns itself back on again for five seconds and realize the load is too low. They go down and go up and down like this. I mean, there's a pros and cons about this setup. It's, the uh, pro is that uh, it's very responsive. If you apply a load right away during the power saving, uh, the inverter will turn the power on right away, o almost right away. I mean, it's a slight delay because it's one second. Um, and so you can turn it on right away. But the problem is that if you the load is too low, for example, let's say you want to charge your laptop, and you plug into your adapter to the circuit, and it probably depends on the laptop. Most likely it's going to be under 100 watt. So you're going to see your laptop start charging for five seconds and off. Charging five five seconds and off. So I don't know long term will that damage anything, but in the reality you're probably not just going to plug in one items. You might turn on the fridge if you have RV or whatever. Depends on your setup. Um, that that that's just how it is. So it work. It might work for some people. It might not work for some people. Uh, for GrowWire, they have a completely different uh, uh, settings. So for GrowWire, it, it check it send a post every thirty seconds. So in this case, um, let's see the. Um, let's say this the green line is the load. Once they see a load, after uh, when the post happens, it will will check really quick. And if the load is not high enough, it'll come right back down. Okay, and it wait for 30 seconds, and let's check again. And they could keep doing that. One issue with this setup is that some of the low um, might not pick up right away. Let's say you have um, a device that you turn it on. It doesn't doesn't use take um, use up all the low at once. It, it might have a delay. It depends how the electric. Uh, Electronic design or electrical uh, appliance design. It might not have, for example, you plug in the fridge, it might not turn on the compressor right away. So the fridge might just use like 50 watt. Right? And so instead of um, with the EG4, you wait for five seconds. They only wait for like l less than a second. If it doesn't find any load, it just comes back right back down. Right? So let's say you plug in the fridge. If that happens, your fridge will never turn it on. Or sometimes if you turn on, if you plug in something over here, let's say at 10 seconds, the inverter won't turn on because the, the next pulse is at 35. So you basically, let's say you plug in something and nothing will work. And you have literally, you have a way for, um, this case will be 25 seconds, from 10 seconds, 35, 25 seconds. You have to wait for 25 seconds for the pulse to happen, and then it, it might turn on. So I found this GrowWatt is is a little bit less reliable. But good good thing about GrowWatt is that the idle consumption under non-power saving mode is a lot lower. It's only 42. In the power saving mode, it's actually not too low. It's 36. The difference is actually it's only six watt difference. If you have grow, I, I recommend you just since the I don't think the power saving mode is all that reliable on grow one. If I am you, I would just turn it off on grow one. And for EG4, uh, depends on the your situation. I think it's a good idea to turn it on if that works for you. Only problem is that with the EG4, you have the idle consumption is 63 watts. It's actually that's it's actually 20 watt higher. That's actually pretty high. If you're gonna use inverter all the time, I recommend you get a grow one. For me, I have my EG4 installed in my RV. Uh, I have a limited of uh, battery and limited of solar. So for me, uh, I need a maximum the power saving. And with it, the EG4, since it posts every second, it's, it works fairly good, uh, at least for my application. Uh, for everyone, that might be a little bit different. When it comes to power saving, both inverter are not perfect. At home, I have a Schneider XW Pro. With the Schneider, it doesn't call um, power saving mode. They call search mode. So if you look at the picture, um, they give me the two options I can set. 
the first option is maximum search watt, which means that um, if you have a load on the circuit that's over, in my case, 50 watt, uh, if you have over 50 watt, it will the inverter will stay on. If if the, your load is under 50 watt, it will turn itself off. So with the Schneider, the uh, idle consumption when the inverter is off is about 15 watt. It's really low. Um, and when the inverter is on, it's only 50 watt. And this is a split phase inverter. So it, it, it's, it's pretty amazing. But for the price, um, <laughs> you pay a lot more. Um, so so my is six thousand uh six thousand I pay six thousand dollars and for my and only you know it's only sixty eight hundred watt six kilowatt unit but with the Schneider it, since it's a um um how do you call that the low frequency I think you guys call I think it's called low frequency it has a coil in there and so it can handle a lot more uh, heavy load so it can like surge like to uh, almost over ten ten thousand watt for like a minute or two. Um, so it's 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 a great unit. It's, it's used. It's very efficient. Except it costs a lot of money. But for my home, since I use that all the time, I decided to purchase that. So for my RV, I use uh, EG4. Since I don't always, I don't use RV as often as I should. So um, yeah, EG4 works out great, and the price is excellent. And um, I'm really pleased with that purchase, and it does everything I need to do. Except there's some learning curve. Uh, same thing with the, sh you know, other Schneider. It's actually nice. It's a lot hard to set up. Uh, one of those days, I'll, I'll come up with a video how to set it up. It took me a while. It's just I don't know. It's maybe it's a German translation. It just doesn't make too much sense for me. Um, yeah. So anyway, one one of those day. Um, but for the price, and I really pleased my purchase of EG4 and a Growatt. They both have pros and cons. And um, when it comes to inverter itself, both works excellent. It's just the little things like power saving modes. You know, Growatt. I personally, I don't think that that you know it's it's the right design. But you know, it might work for some people. It might not work. It just doesn't really work for me. All right. I hope this video helped. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.